heck of a comeback by our guys. Um, really, uh, you know, want to credit our, our our group that came in off the bench in the second half after, you know, starting the first group, starting with a lot of sluggishness and them hitting, uh, you know, three straight threes. I thought those guys came in and gave us some real spirit and energy. And then I thought when the starters went back in, they played uh, with much better fight and energy and spirit. Uh, defensively in the second half, our guys did a great job flying around. This is um, one of the first times I've ever seen a team get that many deflections and not win. Um, but, you know, obviously we had an opportunity to win, weren't able to close it out. And uh, that's what stings the most because, you know, I, you know when, when guys fight and uh, demonstrate the, the, the connectivity and the spirit necessary to come back from being down big like we were, and then take the lead, uh, you know, you, you just want for them and for the team uh, to be rewarded. And that's, that's probably the hardest part about this game. Uh, but our job is to respond. Josh, uh, O'Connell hit that three at the end of the first overtime. What was the defensive strategy there? Did you talk about fouling up three? We normally, when there's six seconds or less, do. Um, it was just a, it was a unique situation with the ball being on the side there. Um, what we didn't want to happen was them to throw it in and then us to go foul and, and, and then to kind of get in the shooting motion. Um, obviously, and you know, when you watch the, the playback, um, you know, we, you, you certainly would want to do something different, either, either really, really play a lot more aggressively um, or foul. But, um, you know, I've unfortunately seen it work out the wrong way both ways. Um, and, you know, I, I think for us, again, regardless of what we're doing, it's about executing it um, and finding a way. And, you know, I think it's really important not to ever encapsulate a game in, in one play. Um, you know, certainly that one sticks out because um, we had a three-point lead with three seconds left. Do you think in the second overtime you guys ran out of steam? Or like Greg mentioned, uh, creating zone defense seemed to throw you guys a little bit. What, what <laughs> yeah, I mean, they don't even really play much zone. Um, and, you know, I thought our, our aggressiveness against it was, was not good enough. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, part of it was second overtime. You know, there was probably a little bit of level of fatigue there on the part of both teams. And then part of it was, um, you know, it takes a really, really tough-minded uh, individual or team to respond from, you know, a gut punch like that shot that O'Connell made. And uh, we didn't do that well enough in the, in the second overtime. I thought our guys tried, um, but man, that 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 takes a real steely resolve, um, and that's something that you know we're not there yet. We, we gotta we gotta get better at. Um, this is a game that, that I think you know with a lot of our players uh, and coaches, all of us together, we'll talk about this game uh, as a lesson. Um, a lot of lessons we can take out of it for a long time. Coach, on the play in the last play of regulation, it ended with Justin taking a three-pointer. What were you guys looking to get out of that play? Is that how you drew it up? Or? No, we, we were trying to get the ball to Tyler initially. They did a good job taking away the initial pass to Tyler, so we threw it in to Oso. And then by the time we got it back to Tyler, we didn't really have time to do what we wanted to do. So um, the guys tried to create a play. Um, you know, I, I, I thought uh, they did a good job of making Justin shot fake. And, and then he was just, you know, it wasn't a clean look for him. But that whole sequence was tough because you got the ball with 20 seconds left. It's a tie game. You want to take the last shot, but you know that they have a bunch of fouls to give. So, you know, you could go, you could go fast, you know, and try to attack, but then you run the risk of them you know, getting a shot. You want to get the last shot. So I thought at the very least we got the last shot and forced worst case situa situation to go to overtime. And then in the overtime, we put ourselves in position to win. We just didn't finish. And, you know, that's, that's the toughest pill to swallow today. Down the stretch of regulation, you were going to the Tyler Oso pick and roll a lot. Yeah. Just what did you see with those two guys and, and their chemistry and how they handled it? Well, you know, early in the game, we – you know, we're getting deep into the paint, but we weren't finishing at all. I mean, we were, we were getting uh, four-foot shots, three-foot shots, even even some layups, and we weren't finishing. 
I thought our guys did a better job as the game wore on, kind of figuring out how to play against that coverage. It's unique playing against someone that big that backs up that much. Uh, most teams, you know, are going to have someone at the level of the screen or maybe a little, a few steps off of it, uh, but they just keep backing up. And what basically what they're saying is we're not going to give you a layup. Uh, so you got to be able to make four foot shots, five foot shots, pull ups, and then you know Tyler did uh, do a better and better job in the second half of. Uh, causing Cockbrenner to commit to him and then finding Oso. That's where he got those dunks. Oso, we're trying to find a different way to ask about his improvement this year, but just have you seen his, his confidence in his daily work and, and you, you see it translate to the games like tonight? Yeah, I, I think he's making a lot of progress. You know, the, the exciting thing is um, he knows that he can, he can continue to grow quite a bit. But uh, number one, he's, uh, he's doing a good job of, working on his game uh, and being a student of the game, even beyond practice. Uh, and I think you see some of those elements carrying over. Um, you know, we just got to, I think with all of our guys, keep getting them better and better at all the little details that go into being uh, a, a really tough-minded, solid player out there. But I'm proud of him. He's made a lot of progress. Um, you know, he, his teammates uh, really trust him more and more. And, you know, that's, that's probably the ultimate, you know, compliment that a teammate can give you. You got Daryl back, but Cam's out in the health and safety protocols. Just as a coach, how do you deal with what could look, it looks like it'd be like a revolving door on, on the roster for a lot of teams the last few weeks. Yeah. Days. Well, we, you know, we, we, not just Cam, but we had, you know, we had another player that, that couldn't practice this week because he was dealing with some stuff. But, uh, and then Daryl came back. Um, yesterday um, and you know it's it's really the times we're in you know I, I think it's something that everyone's having to deal with and you just want guys to be ready to step forward and help their team um, you know I feel really really bad for Cam uh, the last game for Daryl literally having to watch you know their teammates and their team on TV I'm sure Cam's sitting there saying you know, I could help out there. Um, but, you know, having gone through that myself last year, uh, you know, all you can do is just just try to stay positive and as a team, you know, stay connected and, and have guys step forward when, when someone goes out.